Welcome to Triple Helix Robotics instructional video series, Building a West Coast Drive. In this episode, episode three, we're going to be drilling the center axle bearing hole using a milling machine. And the skills we're going to learn are installing the collet in the mill, using an edge finder to find the edge of the drive rail and positioning the uh, tool where it needs to be. And then we're going to use the milling machine to drill the holes. So let's get started. What we're going to do next on this drive rail is we're going to put three large holes in that are here for the axles. Um, the one that's in the center, it needs to be precisely located and we're going to use the milling machine to do that. It's going to be in the exact center of the, of the drive rail and it's going to be shifted down by a sixteenth of an inch. The holes that are on the outsides don't need to be as precisely positioned because those brackets that we put on here, um, the VexPro brackets, they locate the positions of the bearings. So those ones are just clearance holes. So we'll do those on the drill, the drill press. Um, so when we do this on the milling machine, we're going to put the bearing diameter holes in and we can do that with a certain set of tools that we've got over here. So this is our half inch collet. You can see it says half inch on the end of it. And that's the one we're going to install. First of all, we use the half inch diameter center drill. So you're going to use that to, to locate your hole. We're going to use our big bearing drill, drill bit here to drill the bearing hole. And this has a half inch shank on it. So it will go in the same collet. There should be a center finder up here. Is this one? Well, there should be one. This one is a half inch in diameter. So, so you do, yeah. So you can install this one collet and you can do all the operations that you need to do without ever having to switch out. So our first thing we need to do is swap out the chuck for the collet. What she's doing is loosening up the the um, lock nut up on top and then did you tap it to make it come loose? Mm -mm. So you got to loosen this up a little bit like that. There now you tap it. Yep and now you can unthread it. There you go. Okay so the first thing you want to do is wipe that collet and get it clean with with a little moistened rag with WD-40. Uh, you squeeze on top. It'll come out. There you go. Yeah, yeah, squirt it good. There you go. And then you can wipe it. So you want to make sure there's no chips in that because the chips that are in there will get trapped up inside and it'll, it will keep it from fitting properly. And then you want to take your finger and you want to run it up inside of here, like get a little WD-40 in your finger like that, mm -hmm. and you want to run it up inside and spin this by hand, and then that will wipe out any chips that you have up on the inside. And now you know that you'll know that that's that's perfectly clean when you install it. Okay. So you're going to use the center finder first. Yep. That has to be perfectly clean or else it won't sit in level and it won't, um, it won't clamp well. And if it doesn't sit right, then your holes won't be straight. There we go. Okay. Good. Okay, so go ahead and clamp that in place right there. On your normal center finder, what's your, your diameter here is what? It's 0.2, so the radius is 0.1. On this, your diameter is half an inch, so your radius is going to be a quarter of an inch. So what you're going to do is you're going to touch it off just like you normally would, and then you know how normally you'd move over, move over 0.1 and then hit zero? Yeah. On this, you're going to move over a quarter of an inch and hit zero. So when you use a center finder, 
you're coming up and you're touching on it and see how it jumps off to the side when it touches we use that to set the zero and then she'll do it again to confirm that it's in the right spot so there and what we're looking for is for that the tip of that to jump when it touches Right there. Okay. And now you'll be able to see it jump towards me, I think. Yeah. Want me to hit it for you? Yeah. Okay. Now you can lift it up out of the way. Okay. Now come in until it says zero, in that, in the Y direction. And then go a quarter of an inch more. So right now, the face is even with the outside. You want the face to be even with the center. There you go, yes, okay, so that's Y zero. All right, and then the same thing, yeah, in the X direction. So crank it until you can see that the face of this is even with this, and that should say zero. Yes, good. Okay, now move the part that way a quarter of an inch, and the edge should line up with the center of your, of your tool. There you go. Okay. Now. Now, this corner should be in the exact center of your tool. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so now the next tool you need is this one. So you can swap your tools out. And you may have to drop the table down to get it out. You want to put it in there until it's just about that deep because you want to have as much as you can sticking out because when you when you drill down in you want this end to penetrate through the bottom before your, your tool bottoms out. Okay. So you're if you, so if you put it like right in the middle you're probably not going to have enough. Let's see. You know, no, it won't quite make it. So you're going to have to cheat it down a little bit to about like that. Okay. Good. We're gonna come this way, half of 27. 13 and a half. Okay, now you wanna lock your X. There we go. You wanna come in with your Z an inch and a 16th. Not Z, Y. <laughs> 1.0625 and you're not going to hit it exactly that's that's good <laughs> so yeah and then lock your y now what i always like to do just as a double check is loosen this up and drop this down and let it sit on your part and get out the tape measure and just or a ruler and just double check those two dimensions to make sure that they look about right Does it look right it's okay. You're you're just checking just to make sure that nothing got messed up. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. That's it. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we know we're in the right place. Now, in order to drill this thing all the way down and through, you're gonna want to start with the with the the surface of this up pretty close to the tip, so you don't have to push it down too far. There we go. Good. Now, when you drill down through. You should be able to get all the way down. And it never hurts to squirt a little WD-40 on that tool to keep it nice and clean. There. Okay. Now, you want to go ahead and drill it down through until the tip of this pokes out through the bottom. Cool. It's going to go a lot of we'll Go down a little bit and then break, let off to break the chip. There you go. 
So you want to kind of peck at it. There you go. Good. There. Good, good. Very nice. Down through. Okay, when it breaks through that top, I'm going to score some more WD-40 on it. Okay, okay, lift it up. Okay, this is going to go everywhere, so watch out. Okay, go ahead. Okay, break that chip on the inside. There you go. Good. Break through. Okay, good. Perfect. All right. So now we have our hole located. Now we need to drill it out with this guy. Okay. All right. Now you have to lift your Z up just like we did for the other one. Now this is a one and an eighth inch drill bit that we bought from, I think we got it from McMaster Car. That's, that's good enough. Um, the reason we use that particular size is because the bearings, the flanged bearings that go in these drive rails fit into a one and an eighth inch diameter hole. So we know that if we do this right, the bearings will fit in, fit in there real nice. Okay, go for it. Do you need to lift it up higher? You may, you may be running out of room. Oop, other way. There you go. Ready? You're still good. Okay, we're through. Okay, let's go ahead and drop it down. And grab a flanged bearing and we'll drop it in there and make sure it looks good. Perfect. That's awesome. Good fit? Yeah. Our first center hole is drilled. It's on size. And now we can work on our outside holes. And the outside holes don't have to be done on the milling machine because they don't have to be super precise. So we're going to do them on the drill press instead.